water in a minute. It's okay. Do we need another? Because it gets really cold on this side. No, you don't need it. Okay, just, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. All right. My bad. Acts chapter 1, verse 21. As, you, as you're turning there, uh, let's not forget tonight at 6. Someone say, what's tonight at 6? Glory night. Once a month, we come uh, together for a night of God, just do what you do. And that's going to be tonight at 6 p.m. We got churches literally from all over the Bay Area that will be coming in tonight for a time of declaration. We're going to be declaring some things over our church, over our region, over our regions, you can say. Pastor Jeremy from Watsonville will be speaking. He'll be speaking, and it's going to be a powerful time. So do not stay home. It's like a big prayer meeting on steroids. So if you want to, you want the glory, you want to jump in the river, I'm telling you, this is tonight. Tonight, tonight, you want to be here. So Acts chapter 1, verse 21. Therefore, um, the Bible says, of these men who have been accompanied us all the time, I'm giving you something mid-sentence here, but I'm going to explain it to you in a minute. Uh, therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. I'm going to explain it. Verse 22, beginning from the baptism of John to the day, to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us in the resurrection. So what they're doing is they're looking for a replacement for Judas, the disciple that basically betrayed Jesus. So they're looking for somebody to fill in his role. So, And they proposed two. So these were the two candidates that they were looking at. Joseph called Barsabas, uh, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed, okay, very important. They prayed about it, and they said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two men you have chosen to take part in the ministry of the apostleship for which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. Verse 26, last scripture. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Lord, bless your word for the next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated here this morning. I want to talk to you today about a rare faith. Someone say a rare faith. We're going to be talking to us for the next, the next weeks coming on faith. I really feel in my heart that I want to build the faith of the church. And faith is a lot. It's so simple, but yet there's so much to it. Today, um, I feel like I'm scratching the surface, but I want to give you just enough to, to feed your appetite, but also uh, hopefully keep you coming back to learn and to discover um, about our faith. And in and, and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26 that's a pretty popular portion of scripture. It says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we've heard it. You've probably preached it yourself many times. But we know that that is, that is, that is the scripture there that lets us know that we have to operate, every one of us. I don't care if you're full-time ministry or you're, you know, um, whatever you're at in life, okay? If we're believers, then we're challenged to activate our faith, but also grow in our faith. And so as the weeks unfold, I'll be sharing on how to grow your faith and, you know, different things like that. But I wanted to bring out this scripture today because you may be saying, well, what does this have to do with faith? You know, this is a scripture of replacing uh, an apostle. This is a scripture of them praying and basically wanting to replace someone. What does that have to do with faith? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Well, well, you notice... You notice something here, is the 11 apostles, disciples, apostles, are looking to replace Judas. Uh, notice what they're looking for. Um, on the flip side of that, notice what they're not looking for. So in their resume checking, asking for a replacement, you notice how they don't say, how they don't say, uh, we're looking for the best preacher that's out there. Uh, we're looking for the one who has cast the most devils out of people. 
You notice that they didn't say, uh, who has a good strategy in building a church? You notice they didn't say, who's the most polished out of all of us? Um, you know, who has the most ability? Who has the greatest gifts? Who has the most knowledge? How about this one? Who has the most money? Why? Because none of these things mattered. None of these things mattered. See, the only question they had was, has this man been faithful? That was his only qualification. They said, this person whom we're going to choose, and you notice there was only two? They said, had to have been with us all the way from when John the Baptist was preaching. He had to have been there, had to have seen that, had to have seen Jesus get baptized. And not only seen that, but also had to see, had to see all the miracles Jesus was doing. But not only that, but also had to have been there at the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. So in other words, we're not looking for the one that just kind of popped on the scene and says all the right things, has all the dance moves, knows all the quotes, knows all the stories, knows all about God, but doesn't know God himself. You notice how those, none of those qualities mattered, but the only thing that mattered was has this man been faithful? Does he have the ability, and I'll add you sisters too, don't think we're just talking about the fellas, does he or she have the ability to stick it out? Matthias was never, never, ever mentioned before. Wasn't noticed by many. He was a behind-the-scenes type of guy. Wasn't, wasn't a part of the in crowd. Come on, somebody. Wasn't on, on Peter's selfies. Was, wasn't, you know, uh, liked by many, probably. Was, didn't have a, his, his Instagram. Wasn't popping. Come on, somebody. You get the picture. But he was there. Someone say he was there. How many know just being there sometimes qualifies you, man? Say, hey, man, I may not be what everyone else wants me to be. I may not be noticed by people. I may not get the, get the pat on the back all the time. I may not be called up on stage. Come on. I may never even lead a song. I may never even preach a message. Come on, somebody. But what they can say is I was there. He was there when Jesus healed the sick. He was there when Jesus healed and made the lame man walk. He was there when Jesus was baptized. He was there the whole time. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that all, that's all that matters. Come on, somebody say, I'm there. And if I wasn't there, I'm here now. Hey, come on, somebody. See, I feel God telling me to tell some of you here today that he's about to choose some people that have just been there. That's why you cannot minimize the small things that you're doing. Well, I'm just here in church. Do not minimize that, my brother and my sister. Well, I just feel like I'm just sitting here week after week, time after time. God's still working on me. God's still doing the work. Well, you know what? Do not minimize where you're at. I stole this quote, but I'm going to say it anyway today. It says that the little lamp in the house is more important than the chandelier. Why? Because it stops you from stubbing your toe at night. Hey. See, it doesn't matter how insignificant you think you are. It doesn't matter how insignificant you feel you are or, things, or, 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 or it seems like things are in your life. According to this scripture, God does not overlook your faithfulness. Someone say, I'm faithful. Yeah, they can say what they want about me, but one thing is I'm faithful. I don't care if man doesn't recognize me. I don't care if man doesn't recognize you. I don't care if people just walk past you. Come on, somebody. God recognizes you. Sadly, we like to judge people based on how wealthy they are. The house that they have. Their status at work. How about this one? The size of their church. 
Ooh, Lord, the Lord told me. I'm telling you what the Lord told me. Want, want me to tell you what the Lord told me? So it was like a confusing thing when he first told me. I'm still trying to figure it out. I still haven't given him an answer. I think I have. He told me, you want a big church or do you want a big move? And I was like, I, 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 uh, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. A big move? <laughs> Good answer, my son. Good answer. Come on, somebody. How many want a big move? Yeah. See, because all that other stuff, it could be shallow. All that other stuff is shallow, and that's what the enemy wants us to do, is put our, put our attention back on shallow stuff again. Is, is the church has gathered back together, is sports has went back, the movies are back, all these other things are happening all around us. Everything seems to be back to normal again. Well, well we, have to, we, have to, we have to be careful right now, especially in the month that we're in. We're in Tammuz, the month of Tammuz. I'm going to give you a little commercial here. We're in the month of Tammuz, Tammuz 6, the sixth day of Tammuz today. Tammuz is a very, very important biblical month in the Hebrew calendar. And Tammuz is, is the month where Moses came down from the mountain with, with the tablets. And as he was coming down from the tablets, he noticed a noise coming down from Israel. And he noticed he couldn't, he, he, he noticed that the noise that was coming out of it wasn't a good noise. And, and it got his attention. He's like, what are these, what are these, what are these, what are these knuckleheads doing down there? Uh, I'm coming down with the I'm coming down with the Torah. I'm coming down with the Word of God. I'm coming down with direction. Well, little to find out is they had taken their eyes. Israel had taken their eyes off of God. They got impatient and they built a golden calf. That happened this month, and so this month is a is a is a is an important month not to get distracted, not to get impatient with God. It was supposed to be a, mo a time of celebration, but it ended up being a time of mourning. 3,000 people lost their lives as a result of them taking their eyes off. You ain't hearing me today. That's why I say all that stuff is shallow. You got to be careful. Now, I'm not saying, you know, your job is shallow. I'm not saying, fine, I'm not saying any of that. Trust me. Notice what I'm saying. Hear my heart on this. There are some things that are going to try to distract you, some shallow things that are going to try to distract us. And we have to, we have to, we have to understand that God is requiring us to have a rare faith during this time. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance or confidence of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. The King James Version of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance, someone say substance, of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let me teach you for a few moments here. These two words, number one is substance. Verse 1, now faith is the substance. Someone say substance. The word substance simply means literally to stand under and to support. So faith is the substance. In other words, faith will stand under you. And faith will support you. In other words, faith is the foundation. So, so when your faith is tested, we'll know exactly what your foundation looks like. So faith is to a Christian what a foundation is to a house. It gives us confidence and assurance that we will stand. Come on, somebody. That's why what we're doing today is it seems like church, right, on the out, on the, on the out front. It looks like church. It sounds like church. But what you're really doing is you're building your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So it seems innocent. It seems like, oh, I'm just here taking a few notes. I'm here listening to, you know, an in an inspiring message by one of the most inspiring pastors I've ever heard in my whole life before. I mean, this guy is like so fire. He is so like, like he's the, he's the next best thing besides sliced bread. He even looks like a bread today. But it's more than that, my friend. What you're doing is you're building your faith. Come on, somebody. You're worshiping by faith. You're praising by faith. You gave by faith. You're shouting by faith. You got in your car and you got your family here and you came in today by faith, 
hoping, come on somebody, praying and believing that, 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 that your current circumstances will change by faith. If I could just keep coming. And I'm here to tell you that your faithfulness is about to pay off. Faith, the Bible says, the substance, in other words, is, is the foundation. And you're building your foundation here today. See, the foundation determines the ability of a structure to withstand its elements. In other words, rain or winds. See, in times of stormy weather, the substance of your faith is exposed. We could look like we have strong faith from the outside, but when your faith is tested, we are able to see the cracks in our foundation. That's why scripture says faith is the substance. Come on, somebody. How many need to work on your substance? That's ah, okay. I do too. I'm working on it. It's not a one-time construction deal. It's not a one-time, you know, I built it in the home, and yeah, that was, that was a big part of laying your foundation. Yeah, but every season requires a new, a new permit. Some of us need to, get a, you need to go back to the city and get a permit. Lay some new, some new, come on somebody. The foundation gets cracked sometimes. I got to watch how I say cracked around here. Come on somebody. So faith is not only the substance, but the Bible says that it's also the evidence. Someone say evidence. It's the evidence of the things not seen. This word evidence is tied to the word conviction. So when the Bible says that faith is the, is the substance of things hoped for, and it also says that the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, it's saying, it's saying, it's, saying it's, the, it's the conviction of things not seen. What do I mean by that? It simply means that this is an inward conviction that you and I must have from God that what he has promised, he will perform. So I have a conviction with that. Years ago when I was in the men's home, the prophet, Dick Mills, came to Victory Outreach Hayward. And he told this whole section that the men's home was in. And there were some church people uh, that were there. And he said, this whole section right here. Um, it's my Dick Mills voice. He says, this whole section right here. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 31. I read it today, as a matter of fact. He says, if you get saved, you and your whole household will get saved. And then he ended it and he goes, throw up your hand and say, I'll take that. And I grabbed it out of the air. I just did it. I'll take that. And I made it a part of my life. And I says, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay saved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay saved so that I can see that promise come to pass. Now, that was over 20 years ago. Yeah? And I haven't lost hope in that promise. I haven't given up because I have the conviction in my heart that if God said it, then, then it must be coming to pass. And I will not stop being faithful, and I will not stop praying, and I will not stop, come on somebody, coming to church and serving you until I see that promise come to pass. See, it was that kind of faith that Noah had when he was warned about the things not seen. His holy conviction, in his holy conviction, he built an ark to save his family. It was the kind of faith that Abraham had. That when he was called to go to a place that he would later receive his inheritance, he obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going, he had the conviction. It was the kind of conviction that Sarah had, who was past the childbearing age, but because she had conviction, she considered God faithful to his promise that he made. How many have some promises in this place that God has not? Yes, you do. And if you don't have a promise, God's going to give you a promise. But you got to have the conviction. So faith is the what? Substance. In other words, it's your foundation. And it's the evidence. In other words, it's the conviction to have it. So you can tell when your faith is growing because your conviction gets stronger. Yeah. Conviction to believe God for the things yet not seen. To keep believing in the salvation of your family. Someone say amen. To keep believing in your healing. Someone say amen. To keep believing God for a better tomorrow. Someone say amen. But what keeps us going is the evidence from our past. You have a history with God. How many have a history with God? Come on, somebody. I have history with God, and God did it before. He'll do it again. See, that's why Hebrews 11 talks about the past generals of the faith, if you were to keep on reading. Because that's the faith evidence, that if God did it before, then he will simply do it again. And that takes conviction. 
Someone say conviction. So let me just give you just just a, one more thing here today um, that made Matthias's faith rare. Because the Bible, the Bible says, yes, he was dealing with his faithfulness, but you cannot hang out around Jesus, who was the word, the living word, and not become full of faith. So what was his characteristic that gave Matthias this rare faith? Well, it's simple to me. Is, is, that, is, that, is that he didn't allow uh, his feelings to get in the way of his faith. In other words, I'm here when I feel Jesus, and I'm here when I don't feel Jesus. Because as you grow and as you serve God for any kind of long haul, you're going to know that you don't always feel him. I don't always feel him. I walked in church, to church today, you know, knowing by faith. I don't need goosebumps to prove to me that he's with me. I don't need, you know, uh, my bank account to be at a certain level for me to know that he's with me. I don't need things to, you know, be always in my favor to know that I'm right with, come on somebody. And that's the kind of faith Matthias said. That's what they were looking for. They were looking for somebody that's been with Jesus through the ups and downs. They were looking for someone who didn't walk out on him when he died, when he, when he was buried, and when he, come on, somebody. See, we need people in Victory Outreach Fremont that are going to know how to hang in there day in and day out. Sooner or later, there's going to be a shower of refreshing upon your life. With an attitude like Matthias's, I'm faithful. Sooner or later, your spirit is going to be lifted. Lord have mercy. See, there are too many greenhouse Christians. They only thrive when they're in a protected environment. As long as I'm in a protected environment, then I thrive. Lord have mercy. As long as they have no rain, as long as they have no wind, as long as they have no clouds, as long as they have no storms, then I'll be faithful to God. But the moment rain comes, the moment a cloud comes, the moment a... You ain't hearing me today. The moment something does not go my way, then my faith begins to dwindle, and I begin to throw in the towel, and I begin to put the I quit t-shirt on. But when the wind changes, the environment changes. You'll find them weak and in situations that are not thriving, all because they're not going perfect for them. That's a greenhouse Christian. We don't need greenhouse Christians in Victory Outreach Fremont. But God is looking for people that will stay with him through the ups and the downs. The ins and the outs. Come on, somebody. The good times and the bad times. Someone whose faith has been tested. Someone whose, whose faith has been good and tested. How many, how many today, your faith has been you can't even lift your hand up, right? It's like, oh, hey, come on, somebody. Yeah, I want to hang out with you sometime. I like hanging out with those who have been tested. I like hanging out with those that can, that can, that can make it through the rough times. Lord, have mercy. See, the truth is, is that he is testing your faith so that he could trust your faith. Letting you know that you don't always have to feel God in order to know that he's with you. Maybe you're feeling, feeling like you want to quit today. Maybe not today, but I can promise you somebody in this room is thinking about quitting. I can pro and I'm not, that's not a bad thing. It is if you quit. But you're thinking about it, but you're here. And now your mind is changing. Now your hope is changing. Now you're feeling lifted. Now you're not feeling discouraged anymore. You feel like fighting more. You feel like I'm not done yet. You feel like God is just testing me. All it is is a test. Woo, come on somebody. God has backed you up into a corner. To check your foundation. 
to see what that foundation is like. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Am I preaching too hard to you this morning? Ooh, but I'm here to tell you today, don't you quit. My brother and my sister, don't you dare quit. See, that's a rare faith these days. It's like an endangered species in the house of God. I see a bunch of endangered species out here today. You didn't quit. How many thank God you didn't quit? See, God is not glorified when you give up. See, when we give up, we sometimes miss, we miss the breakthrough. When we give up, we, we miss out on the process. When we give up, we kind of just like not only disqualify ourselves, but those that were depending on our breakthrough. See, coming soon, I'm going to preach to you about having a transferable faith. That your faith and my faith is transferable. I thank God that someone transferred their faith over to me. I thank God that I had a pastor that transferred his, his, his faith over to me. I thank, come on somebody, I thank God that I had a mom that transferred her faith over to me. I thank God that I had leaders in my life that transferred their faith over to me. You're here, I'm here today because someone transferred some faith over to you. Someone deposited some faith into your life. I look back on the last 25 years of my life and if I've done anything else, I've just been here. Some people say, hey, uh, I know him from the streets. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? Uh, what you been up to? I just been here. Like, you still doing the church thing? Okay, yeah. Even the world says, I heard you got a building. I said, yeah? You got to come sometime. Ah, maybe sometime. I've just been here. I've been faithful. I've been faithful. I don't have all the smarts, but what I lack here, I make up here. Yeah. What I lack in skill, I make up right here. Yeah, I've been kicked. I've been spat on. Spiritually speaking. But I'm here. Hey. When I first pastored the church, I had jet black hair. I look like, uh, I don't know, that's not a good one. I should get that pompadour back, like the big one. This is a little one. Well, hey, I'm still here. You got to learn how to hang tough. And that's why some of you third waivers that were up here, you know, on the stage here today, my advice to you would be is, is, is you need some friends with some gray hair. We know how to stick it out. I'll share some stories with you, and half the people around here will share some stories with you. Come on. When things happen, don't freak out. There are people in this church right now that know how to stick it out. I mean, all hell has been released on their life, and they are still planted in the house of God. The enemy has beaten some of us up so bad that he will make us feel like a failure in the kingdom. If that's you, stay faithful. Sometimes we feel unrecognized or, not, or like we're not contributing to anything. Listen, my brother, my sister, just stay faithful. Work as if God sees everything you do. Because he does. He is your witness. You keep reading Hebrews 11. It says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Faith. Come on, somebody. Say faith. Faith, faith, faith is the, is the, is the, is the foundation and it's the conviction in our life. He is your witness. He is your lifter. He is the one who will bring promotion to your life. So when they were looking for a replacement, 
to the highest office at that time. An apostle to replace another apostle going into the new church building the new church there in the book of Acts God I love that they said just give us someone that has faith someone that has faith in their life so much faith that they're faithful know how to stick it out that have seen a lot the good, the bad, and the ugly who have been thrown the worst case scenarios at their life that's why I admire my God I admire Victor Romero so much Victor, like, like you're my hero you and your sister Rosa like you're my hero like, like, so quiet, so behind the scenes -y. Like, never give me any trouble. Cover your ears, everybody. Just kidding. Like, not a yes man. For, you, you think for yourself. Rosa thinks she has great ideas. You hear me? But my God, Jesus. I'm not going to share their story, but you know their story. Lord have mercy. Like my, my tire went flat the other day. I felt like giving up. I was in Sacramento at the gold red and my, my flat tire went. My wife had to soothe me all day. It's okay. It's all right. It's not the end of the world. We'll get it fixed. You're the man. You're the man. You're the man. You're the man. I believe in you, honey. I believe in you. I like the whole way home. I'm on a little donut driving from Sacramento. It's okay. Okay, let me put on some music for you. Listen, calm your nerves. It's the end of the world. Come on, don't look at me like that. Some of you. Some of you. I saw you on the freeway too. Yeah, let, let, let me get the singers up here. For Linda Sanchez Lopez, my God, this woman right here. And they say behind every great woman, there's a man behind her, right there. Frank, too. Come on, Frank. Stephanie Aranda. them coming back. They'll tell you it's not going to be no huge little formula. They're going to tell you just a few words and you, you, it's going to be so simple it'll blow you away and you'll be like, wow. But they'll tell you simply. to stop overlooking what you think is insignificant and what you think nobody's watching. And you're probably right. Man, don't notice it, but I'll tell you who notices it, God. Don't be so hurry, hurry to climb the ranks of Christianity. Don't be so much in a hurry to rub shoulders with all that comes if your heart is pure and your heart is right. Don't ever make it this, don't ever make what I'm doing here your end goal. Oh, I just want to get up there. Because if that's your goal, it'll probably never happen. God always raises up people who have just been, been faithful. 
I got out of the house, and I got out of the house, got out of the men's home, and taught children's church for two years. I was just being faithful. People walked right past me, Brother Anthony. Oh, but when they needed a mop, you know who they, they look they look for me. I need a mop. Who do we call? Call Anthony. Hey, we need a mop. That's right. I know where it's at. Come on.
he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. She's singing this over you. And he never will, he never will. Let it be sung over you today. And he never will, he never will. He's never lost a battle. He's on the right defender. A strong tower. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Faith. 
stories in this house. Raise up some new miracle stories in this house, God. We thank you for the history that we have with you. We thank you for the breakthroughs of the past. But God, we're ready for a new breakthrough, God. We're ready for a new anointing, God. We're ready for some new stories, God. We're ready for some new healings, God. We're ready for some new financial miracles, God. We're ready for some
to the mountain of life.
for this moment, Lord, because these are the moments that shift our thinking, shifts our faith, shifts our posture. God, we don't want to do church without you. We don't want to build anything, God, if you're not the foundation. And so we take time. We're not ashamed to take time. We're not ashamed to bask in your presence. What else do we have, Lord? Where else would we go? Where else would we go, Father? Just stay with us, Lord. where I long to be.
before you, Lord, this morning, and we thank you for your presence. We want nothing less than your presence. We want nothing less than your tangible presence in our life. We don't want visitations, God. We want habitation to be a part of our lives. So we thank you for moving. We thank you for speaking. We thank you for healing. We thank you for delivering. And we are just so thankful to you today, God, that you would count us to be faithful. Not perfect, but faithful. Raise up a rare faith in our church. Raise the faith level in our church. And Father, we are so careful to give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, Amen. 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 My God. back tonight at 6 p.m. for our glory night. It is going to be, again, a powerful, powerful evening of declaring, of hearing the word, and just a time of God's presence. So we love you guys. You can consider yourselves dismissed. We have some fellowship outside, and we'll see you tonight.